Okay, so uh, just like really basic stuff. What is your trophy count? Your uh, challenge cards one. I guess I could just look at your profile, but it's easier to just ask you. Yeah. So my trophy count right now is thirty five eighty nine. Uh, and then the highest I've ever been was um, 37, 58. <coughs> mm -hmm. Your uh, cards one? Uh, ch challenge cards one is um, 1,160. Okay. And <coughs> uh, so what do you want to get out of this coaching? Um, I just want to get better at um, just overall one overall gameplay. But I also want to get better at Hog Cycle. You want to get... So, you... okay. Because um... I've, I've, o yeah. I've only been playing since January. And the only deck I've really consistently used is Mortar and Hog Cycle. Okay. So, that's, that's really good for ladder. Um, really good for climbing. Actually, I, I would say pretty good for learning as well. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, Hulk Cycle and Mortar. Consistently playing, like, how, do you, do you find it the most fun? Um, yeah, I like, I like Hog a lot, just because it's, it's, like, aggressive, and, and then I like Mortar, too, just because, um, the cost of, of Mortar is so cheap, and it's similar to 4, as in Hog, mm -hmm. um, and so you can, you know, really punish people, or, or take advantage of, um, certain situations, and it's not, like, a huge elixir commitment. I, I like that. Okay. Uh, so, how much do you know about the hog playstyle? Like, uh, have you watched other people's videos on it yet? Yeah. So I've watched um, all of Clash with uh, Clash with Ash's videos on uh, Hog Two Point Six. So his interviews with Sushi Pay, Pay uh, Marcel P, um, and I think there's one more. And then I've watched your uh, Hog Two Point Six videos. The, the guides on those. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I've watched Hazard. Um, he has a couple hog cycle videos that I've watched. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. That's off the that's the top, off the top of my head though. I've watched a lot of it. That's how, that's how I've gotten um, better at it is watching other people play it for sure. Okay, that's really good then. So a lot of the concepts that. Like, I'll explain to you throughout a lesson. You should be able to, like, know, pick up on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> so we can kind of skip that. But uh, you said you had replays? Yeah, yeah, I'll share some right now. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, we'll just start off with the replays and then okay. questions. And we'll see what, where we can go from there. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So this is the first loss I have on here. The giant Sparky deck on ladder. And I got three crowns. I honestly don't even remember what happened in this game. This is a little while ago. About a day ago. <laughs> That's a great clan. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I, I love the Parks and Rec. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's me and a bunch of my friends. Okay, tornado. Yeah, using, so I, uh, yeah. So I used Hog two point six to get me to thirty six hundred. Um and then I see I saw I started seeing a lot of people on T V Royale um and Hazard use this two point eight hog deck with NATO, so I, I tried it out and I kinda like it. Um I don't know if I like it more than two point six, but I think it it works better playing against certain matchups, especially like um a lava loon. Like the tornado is really helpful. Yeah, no, this one uh, is, at the moment, much better. And uh, it's actually, like, I mean, what I tell people who are trying to learn one deck or trying mm -hmm. to learn a style is to pick, like, the deck and kind of stick to it. Um, 2.6 is one of those kind of weird kind of things where I, I would probably introduce you to the deck as it is, like, with the cannon. Uh -huh. But if you have a lot of experience, then switching over to Tornado is actually fine. Okay. Uh, this version was created by one of my friends, and oh, really? he's like a beast at it. Yeah. Who? If you don't let me ask it. Uh, it was it, this. This version is made by Isaporn. Okay. Cool. From uh, Lively Colors. 
That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, let's see. So, I'm gonna share my screen with you. You'll be able to see my screen on your Skype. Okay, and, cool. And uh, we'll go through the replay together, all right? Cool. And we'll see what we could have done a little bit better here. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so, already yeah. I can kind of see that uh, his deck is, like, really dangerous if you are not putting your cards in the, in the right places. Mm-hmm. It's like if he does, you know, um, like you fireball pump and he just drops a weird like giant minion horde or something like that. Mm -hmm. You have to be really on point with what you have in your hand or what you have in your cycle to stop mm -hmm. pushes. Like, So if you see something like um, elite barbarians, you know that your response is typically going to be uh musketeer in the middle with knight in the middle to drag them right or mm -hmm. musketeer and your cycle cards or mm -hmm. uh knight and your cycle cards or something like that right yeah if you see minion horde you know that you either want to fireball or you want to tornado or you want to zap ice spirit mm -hmm. uh when you see hog rider you i mean no, not hog rider when you see giant you probably want to tornado it Either to the middle king tower or um, or like have your units stack up on it. So what I'm basically saying is, when you see these kind of like really niche cards or uh -huh. really dangerous cards, you need to have preset responses to them so that you know what to do when you see it. Okay. I uh, I can probably bet that you'll you'll die by your defense to one of these cards. Like it's either going to be the minion horde. Or yeah. the Sparky, I believe it's probably what's going to kill you. I don't. I I'm pretty sure you'll find you're fine on the elite barbarians. <clears throat> you know, in combination with the giant. All right, so let's go ahead and go into it. Uh, actually, I need to share the screen with you. Here. Okay. You, can you see it? Can you see the, my screen? Yep. As it loads terribly slowly. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> hmm. <coughs> that one percent. Yeah. Okay, okay. There it goes. I, I, I don't know, usually. I I mean, good. we just started the day. <laughs> it's yeah. got to warm up, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you got you to gotta let it have its time. <laughs> I'm not really going to be commenting too much. I just want to see what you're thinking okay. while you're playing. Bad fireball. You could do that better with the Ice Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's very small, but it helps you in ladder a lot. Um, you want to wait. It's just really, really simple. You see the Fire Spirits coming. Mm -hmm. You wait for one to die, and then you drop the Ice Spirit here, 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 wherever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll tank one one Fire Spirit and then walk up and tank another. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get you. You don't do it so that uh, it, one okay. dies and then you tank like a f uh I'm, I'm not sure how this one died i forget but it shouldn't die it shouldn't die yeah. basically it should be <laughs> half health and walking up yeah it's just to get out two waves basically right yes i didn't even know you could do that that's pretty cool um 
Oh, that's very good already. <coughs> oh yeah, that's how you do it. You tank the first wave. You know, supposed to tank it. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Tornado everything back or that way. That's okay. <laughs> this guy in this furnace is I know it's actually uh quite disgusting. I think he does a good job of like letting me get damaged <laughs> and then just building up this massive push that I can't do anything. That's that's like the best way to say it. I think he does a good job of letting me get damaged. It's, it should actually just stop right there. The sentence should stop right there. <laughs> okay, so there's, from what I'm seeing, there's definitely no reason to have lost this. Uh, there's actually very many opportunities to win. Okay. This guy uh, did not know how to defend. I think he. Um, yeah. Yeah, for one, he did not know how to defend. He did not know how to build pushes. But mm -hmm. I think your problem was that <clears throat> you didn't know what it looked like to defend properly. I think that's okay. where you're getting caught up here. All right, so I'm going to go through the replay one more time, except we're okay. just going to talk about everything now. All right? If you have any questions, make sure to like air them out so that okay, we can cool. get them done. Okay. So do you normally open with hog? Because I feel like, like I've heard people say different things. Like, it's bad to open with hog. Um, and some people, like, like the only I feel like the only time that I sometimes will do it is if I have, like, a shit hand. So I have, like, fireball, tornado, and, like, zap in my hand. And then the only other card I have is hog. So, mm -hmm. like, that's, like, the only thing I, I know how to play. Yeah. Or not, like, no. But, like, I don't want to, like, leak elixir. Mm -hmm. And have him play something. So, like, do you normally play hot? Like, do you open with hog? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Well, I mean, it's all like there's never a hard set answer. You just not, it's if you ask someone to say like, oh, do you ever open with hog? It's never mm -hmm. set. It it's pretty much always going to be preference. Like, mm -hmm. um, I've noticed that when I play hog on ladder, it's actually okay to just drop a hog right away. Um, mm -hmm. not right away, like at nine, ten elixir or whatever. And if they don't have any answers, you, that's a lot of really good damage early on. Yeah. Uh, I would not be afraid to drop Hog, especially in a deck like this, where it's super fast cycle and it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't worry about it too much if people are telling you to not play Hog. Okay. Just, like, do it. Fine. <clears throat> so, dropping Skeletons in the back is perfectly fine. You just want to sit here and wait. Uh, dropping the Musk is an interesting one interesting move like typically in this deck you want to be holding musketeer because she's so versatile on defense and offense mm -hmm. um by putting her here yeah you, you see you open yourself up to fireball lightning rocket mm -hmm. which is uh really big and you have nothing really to counteract that he does something kind of crazy though he he fireballs and misses you um yeah so like let's say this fireball did land on your musketeer right Mm -hmm. another thing a lot of people who play this deck fall into like a mistake they fall into is they'll let themselves be uh like double spelled like you get fireballed you drop a hog into the same lane with the musky then they mm -hmm. log you mm -hmm. um you don't want that you don't want to play yeah. into the same lane where people get more value so okay. doing things like dropping like let's say this uh, musketeer was fireballed dropping your ice spear dropping your hog they log it that's completely terrible Mm -hmm. What you have to a lot do, of value. yeah. What you have to do is just switch to the other lane. Just go say like, um, if you want to make them choose, if you if you mm -hmm. have a musky in the right lane, play a hog in the left one. Okay. Look at his elixir. Like, what what could he have really done? Yeah. Right?
So I see like you know the hog with the musky. I, I think it, it at this it's actually fine because he misses the fireball. But mm. I, I am pretty sure that if this was a if he did land it, you would have done the same thing. Mm. So that's why I address it. But you don't. I, you actually don't need to fireball here either. That was a um. So I think like the list of spell priority that you want to be kind of following is. Uh, fireball. You want to be holding onto it until you f see reason as to, as like you don't need it like um he could surprise you with just like a minion horde and mm. you don't have well actually your deck does so well against minion horde but i don't know like if, if his deck has something insane like three musketeers yeah or like the pump and you don't know it yet yeah you want to be holding onto the fireball that entire push could have been held off by just tornadoing everything back with like cycle cards or musky or something mm-hmm So I think here you kind of try it, but we'll f kind of freeze frame it. So you let this first one die. Mm -hmm. So not yet, not yet. <laughs> you let one hit. On the tower. Oh, wait a second. No, you actually did it right. He actually just has a overleveled over -level furnace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I was like, wait, I, I, I thought that maybe um your first, you tanked the first ice spirit. Okay. All right. No, you're fine. You're fine. You did it right. Okay. Yeah. I was watching it earlier and I wasn't sure, but uh, <laughs> this one. That's a good hog. He doesn't know how to play his furnaces. His furnaces should never. Like, he kind of consistently plays his furnaces here, here, but mm -hmm. his furnaces should be up, up, up here mm -hmm. to drag Hog Rider. Um, a thing about furnaces that I kind of want to tell you is. Ah, damn, it's kind of hard. Uh, <laughs> there's a furnace placement where you cannot pick, pick push past it like uh -huh. if he puts it three tiles up like here yeah if it's up further enough it doesn't yeah. matter which lane you push it's not gonna mm -hmm. push but the the weakness of that is that it can be sniped by a musketeer at the bridge mm -hmm. uh the other way is if he puts it here like um regular position mm -hmm. and you'll have to look at which lane it's kind of going into if the mm -hmm. furnace is here then that means you can pick push this side if the furnace is here and going toward this side, then you can pick push this side. Okay. Okay. It'll help you a lot in the overleveled ladder where people are playing shit like furnaces. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. Uh, you take the tower. Um, and now you should be kind of in defense mode. This is 130. Mm -hmm. You still have not seen his win condition. He drops a Sparky at the back. So this is really smart from you, by the way. Ten out of ten um, move that I think <laughs> like so many new uh, like beginner. Uh, I don't know how to say it. E mm -hmm. Even like intermediate, like they they kind of know what they're doing. Just yeah. don't do. This musketeer is dead. Yeah, it should have been fireballed, but it, it wasn't fireballed. Um, you don't play off of this musketeer. Yeah. So dropping the knight at the back to to restart your push and um. And to start your offense is fine, mm -hmm. right? Like this is this is really good. You have you had two options here. You could do this, or you could put pressure into the opposite lane. Okay. I would not really go for three count unless like you're certain to make him kind of follow you. So you mm -hmm. fireball there. I would have held the fireball just because I still don't know what the hell his win condition is. <laughs> yeah. You let this knight go. And now this is I think the sort of hard part here see so you had four elixir dropping the night uh that fireball i think kind of kills you here again because mm -hmm. you do fireball a pump you do fireball like the thing about a pump in this one minute is that you're it's gonna give him elixir but your deck is so cheap so cycling so defensive with tornado fireball poison uh fire, fireball zap skellies mm -hmm. Knight that you can hold off pretty much like two, one or two full pushes, even with a pump. And you're, time, you're just like trying to buy time anyways. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you had Fireball right here, or you had nine Elixir. It would have mm -hmm. been such an easy hold. You could zap all this, tornado everything, drop the knight on top of the uh, Sparky and just kill it. Let the musky do its thing against the giant. But now you're going to have to pull off a miracle. Um, <laughs> Maybe. So the fireball was an overcommitment. Yeah. 
Maybe like I think you first have to open with tornado. Actually, you have to tornado. You're tornadoing everything like to the side. You need tornado up. Up. Okay. Yeah. Like further back. Uh huh. Because the the threat here is the sparky shot. Mm. The further away that you pull a sparky shot, the longer you have for your musketeer to do damage. Mm -hmm. But to pull it, you're actually pulling it closer. See it? Yeah. The stuff that was like kind of coming, like the elite barbs, are actually being pulled closer. Closer. But at this point, like you kind of gotta concede your tower. Mm -hmm. Throwing this down is too much. The knight. Just kind of give up. Yeah. Because as soon as you see that big push start pushing through, you say, all right, you take my tower, I'm going to clean this up as best as possible without mm -hmm. getting through crown. And then you start to think about the 1-1 the one, one game. Mm -hmm. He has a furnace, like the, your biggest obstacle in this game is, your, is his furnace, uh, stopping you from getting the second tower mm -hmm. and from him building a big push. So your two choices are to somehow get through his furnace and get his second tower or to three crown him. Or to put enough pressure on him that you could force a draw. And mm. this is where I kind of laughed. He, he like instantly put his, puts his furnace at the back. Uh -huh. Which makes no sense because he just allows you to go back and win this game. Like if, if I were you right now, I'd wait for this musketeer like at the bridge. And then uh -huh. I just would drop knight uh, hog right here and go right in. You need to zap this. Mm-hmm. All the pressure, all that damage, you missed, I think, a hog hit right there. Yeah, it would have done more damage if I would have zapped the Sparky, mm -hmm. and then I could have gotten one or two probably hog swings off. Yeah, here you're, uh, you're what's it, uh, leaking too much? But mm -hmm. this tower, when it's in 775, this is more than enough range. That's like two fireballs on the zap. Mm -hmm. Fireball two, cycle. Yeah, fireball cycle zap. And before he kills you, like you can 100% kill him. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you had gotten that last hog hit too. It would have been so, feel, so simple. Yeah. I feel like I should have gone with hog here instead of trying to play defense because I don't know if that push could have killed me fast enough. You could have, yeah. Because he Cause I think I could his have, minion horde for some Yeah, because it was overtime because I think I could have like won the race basically because like, it was such a slow pu push with Sparky. I could have just hog knighted his second <laughs> tower. Mm -hmm. Instead, I just sat back and played defense. Okay, I think we got enough from that replay. So, uh, the way you should be thinking about this replay, we're not thinking, oh yeah, I should have dropped, I should have all in him. Like, you, mm -hmm. this is not how you watch a replay. You skip through all of this, you go all the way to the end, where uh, he th drops his minion horde with his, what, with his giant, and is about the three count you, you just say, oh, I should have played the knight. I mean the hog rider, mm -hmm. right? Like we went through the entire replay. We found all the stuff that we could have talked about. You don't ignore all of this. True. And just like just point out that one thing. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I see what you're saying. Cause there's a bunch of things I did wrong that could have won me that game. Yeah. Well, not necessarily wrong. I, I think that you didn't see it either. If you didn't, mm -hmm. you don't see it. Like if I tell you now, like you'll probably right. see it. And that's what I think, just like looking at your replays, watching other videos, watching mm -hmm. other people, you get to see it. And uh, if you, even if you don't understand it, you know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. That's so important. So important. Um, yeah. If, so if you have another replay, you can take a yeah. look at another one. This is a, a hog freeze. I don't even really remember this one either. This is another ladder gameplay. Mm -hmm. Ag against hog riders, you know how to activate King Tower, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've watched... Not sure if it was... I hope I did it in this one. <laughs> this is a couple of days ago, so... Freeze arrows. It's... It's lit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of these decks are just wild. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, let's go into it. Let's go into it. You still see my screen, right? Everything's good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything's all good. Doesn't really matter how you open, just like play your cards. Make sure, like right now, it's not. I think around your trophy range, around like you know your skill level, mm -hmm. don't focus on things like I need to open up uh, perfectly. 
just mm-hmm. think about i need to open up i need to like, yeah. not leak elixir i need to make sure to be playing my cards in the right order not giving value stuff like that that's way more important mm-hmm. uh this this bomb tower can be pig pushed you know that right yeah i on the left lane yeah okay when you see this stuff as a hawk player you need to um kind of know it be, uh, be mm-hmm. aware of it even if you don't take advantage of it Yeah, I think I should have hogged in the left lane. Mm-hmm. Good. You're being reactive with your tornado, which you should be. You need your knight. Mm-hmm. Good. Good defense. Now, should I have hogged, like, right away after I, like, dropped that knight? Like on the other lane? Uh, it's actually fine to have hogged into the same lane, but you mm-hmm. need to be a little bit more patient with the hog rider. The hog rider mm-hmm. did get, like, the way that you can do this, it, you don't have to, like, do it so that the hog pushes the knight or anything, but you mm-hmm. need the knight to tank the king tower. Oh, uh, okay. At the very least, like, hogging right away made it so that it jumped over the knight. It shot at the, okay. Yeah, the, um, the hog was tanking the tower. Which should be the other way around. <laughs> yeah. Don't get fixated on two towers as well. Like, uh, on a low tower. Mm-hmm. You don't have to get fixated on it. So you, you should be tornadoing. That's fine. Although your musky position is so, if kind he of drops a musky here, mm-hmm. you don't drop a musky at the back. Yeah, uh, how do I say this? Um, if if they drop a musky here or here, mm-hmm. you have enough time to drop your musky back here or here, because by the time they meet up, it'll be in the middle. If he drops a musky here, like mm. anywhere past these tower points, like here, even you need to play your musky mirrored either here or here. Mm. Uh, you saw what happened. Like his musky had the threat, um, and your yours was still walking up. Mm. But the way he kind of did his push, like he, you could have tornadoed into King Tower, then just drop a skeleton on his musky. But still, you know, it's it's mm. fine. It's another just small thing. Good. Just don't leak. You were predicting barbarians. Yeah. I think it was fine. As long as I, should, I probably have... should have waited. No, it's it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. As long as like you can tell me why you do it. Mm. Get everything back. You know that he has freeze. Just wait on it a little bit. Now start. Ooh. You didn't need to fireball. Mm. Uh, you want to be abusing your your cycle cards. I think in your hand you had skeletons, you had zap, you had knight. No, knight maybe. I I'm not sure on that one, but you had your cards. You just need to be fast with them. Yeah, bad fireball. Yeah, the fireball is not. I mean, it, it should be used much much more as like a last resort on defense if like mm. everything goes to shit. Okay. Yeah clean up but you didn't need to okay you let this die or you fireball uh you can cycle ah okay missed the timing it's fine <laughs> leaked a little bit there that's bad Oh, it would have been such a sad day if you had died to the <laughs> executioner. <laughs> I, I think he hog freezes me here. Yeah. 
So like this would look like a position where you would fireball. Mm. Right. Like a last resort. Yeah, it's a last resort. That's that's when you fireball. So mm. when I see you fireball a push I think that you can absolutely defend with like your mm. NATO. Because like NATO is a solid, solid defense. Um you're gonna see these same mistakes a lot through these replays. Mm. Uh where is it? We're just gonna go back. To, we're we're gonna like kind of skip to that point really okay. fast. But be here, like you need to identify when you can use your hog rider yeah. free by Should putting the other lane. Yeah, by putting it like here with uh, with with the full health bonfire does nothing because he, mm -hmm. he'll have to defend. Timing with the musk. Yeah. Alright, keep that in mind. It's okay to hog fireball. Um, if you want to make it a little bit cleaner, uh, yeah, you you drop hog, and I would say like count to two, hog. Okay. One, two, fireball. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because like what happens in other people's head is, uh, they see the hog coming. They wait a second to see whether or not you put something behind it, and then mm -hmm. they defend. Okay. If you fireball right away, it plays into them watching, and then they just won't do anything. Okay. You see what you have in your hand? You have so much elixir. Mm. This uh, elite barb, this, um, this barbarian, this executioner, I know the executioner makes it kind of tough, but you only have to buy a second. Mm -hmm. so just play skellies. You, yeah, the instant you see this, you want to play. You want to play skellies like here, even. Okay. Because they can see it, they have the sight range on the skeletons, but the executioner does not. Mm -hmm. So if you put it here, they run this way. Then you have another musky. You can put another musky here, another musky here. You have a hog. You have a skeleton. Uh, well, you're gonna have like a spirit or a knight coming up next, mm -hmm. which you can put onto the executioner. So imagine if we had played your cards out. Uh, this would have been here, Musky would have been here, here. Your next card was Ice Spirit, Ice Spirit on top of this. And mm. even if you had to, then you could just zap or tornado everything back. Oh, that fireball is actually a complete miss, but <laughs> it's actually fine. It's fine. So I think big points to take from this game was mm. being aware of when you can play your Hog Rider with Bomb Tower against this guy as well furnaces if they misplay you can abuse that mm -hmm. uh, using these like the reason why having these two cards and tornado is so good in your deck is just because like you you can make you can pull off some really clutch defenses mm -hmm. so be be using that um let's see mm, yes little things like with your hog rider pushes but it's okay to do hog fireball mm -hmm. uh, if you know that their defense is something like a barbarian elite barbs musketeer minion uh i would say just keep trying and you'll pull it off eventually mm -hmm. or you pull it off I, I i think right now you'll probably pull it off less than than like half the times but as long as you do it a few times and you kind of get the feeling for it mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there any questions so far? Anything? Um, no. I mean, making good points, and I'm actually learning like a shit ton. So super helpful. Definitely things that like I watch my replays for sure. Um, but there's definitely things that like I just don't even really think about, and it's it's huge like hearing it from from someone that like really knows what they're talking about because it because there's some things I just have no idea. You know what I mean? Like I just don't really notice them because I'm just like. Like 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 you said when you watch replays, I'm like, oh yeah, I did this wrong, okay, and then I won't do that next time. Whereas like you're literally breaking down everything, and there's small little mistakes that I'm making that could make a huge difference throughout the game. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we have time for another replay. Do you have one more? Yeah, I have a um a lava loon replay. Oh, that's perfect. And this guy was in, um, he's at 4,700 trophies, and it was in a classic challenge. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was actually a pretty close game. I don't remember though, but I'll share it. Oh, this is a hard one. <laughs> yeah. This uh, this actual variation dominated ladder. Yeah. A long, well, not a long time ago. I think maybe two seasons ago. It was like. Oh, so, so bad. You saw this everywhere. Um, <laughs> so the point of this deck is you get your pumps up, mm-hmm. and then you just three crown people off flaws alone. Yeah. <laughs> you, it, it's, it's possible to win, but you need a lot of uh, foundational knowledge with this deck to pull off. Like mm-hmm. you, you have to abuse Musketeer range. You have to uh, be NATOing correctly. If you can activate King Tower with this... Um, which is definitely possible. It's really good. Uh, using your hog, you have to be pushing at the right times as well. So mm-hmm. pull this off. Let's see how much. Well, we can learn. Mm. Overall good. <laughs> Fireballing, uh too preemptively too early yeah that was a, i think it was a bad fireball it's more important like you're not looking for chip damage because if you look at your tower like the way this kind of works out um most of the times when you play this deck against La- lava loon you have to shift your mentality you're mm-hmm. not looking for a perfect game this, yeah. it's very 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 difficult to play <laughs> a game right a lava loon just because of how destructive like their pushes are mm-hmm you're looking for like this tower right here is is already down to one fireball this tower you're going to be pushing co- constantly off of defense mm-hmm. um if he builds up an unstoppable push because you do things like fireball a lone mega minion mm-hmm. you just have to give up this tower if anything mm-hmm. but usually um when you play this deck you're going to be winning off of two crowns and though they should only be able to take one tower mm-hmm. so the way you pushed in the beginning was actually perfectly fine the fence was good as well but that can i see come back and bite you like what's the difference between all right i'm going to watch this see how this kind of holds out you can just zap it it's mm-hmm. going to get a second hit if you don't zap uh, there's a late set yeah so like your point right now you have to all in like onto this 1100 tower mm-hmm. wow that's an interesting pump so just ignore that fireball that later oh <laughs> oh <laughs> oh no oh no The uh, you need a pick push or drop it like anywhere here, <laughs> yeah. Um, fireball, good, good. The game is still salvageable, although you've lost oh, like basically your entire lead. If he pumps again, he's kind of crazy. Okay, knight, hog, uh, zap.
Oh no. <laughs> Rip. All right. A lot to unpack there. Let's okay. go ahead. Let's, let's uh get started. <clears throat> so I forgot. I I think he just starts off with a lava hound, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of crazy, especially considering he has a pump in his hand. So um. With the way that your hand works out, the smart I, I, I think like the, the smart move would have been to not look for your hog rider because your hog rider could very well be your last card. Uh you drop Ice Spirit Cycle, you cycle into Zap, Fireball, Tornado, Knight, and then a Muskie. The next card could be skeleton, you could be completely screwed. Um the thing about like an early lava hound the thing about like these first lava hound pushes are that they're not very scary especially oh. when you have your musky you have your fireball you have your tornado because the thing about it their lava hound push is lava seven with a uh, balloon 12 with spells with troops it's kind of too much mm -hmm. so don't be scared about defending it dropping the knight here is actually perfectly fine okay you let the knight walk up and the knight basically acts as like a sort of uh shield for your musky to do damage to the lava hound when you the, the scary part about the lava hound decks is not the lava hound it's mm -hmm. it's the balloon every single time so if a if a lava hound locks into your tower and you have a musky shooting at it like don't be afraid of the damage does mm -hmm. nothing um it's really all about time you're just buying time that's what the the knight is kind of here for Okay. So to put your knight there, you did kind of get lucky. Thank God that you had your um, hog rider, because mm -hmm. like just to you managed to get a lot of damage here, which is good. Um, but this is pretty risky still because you mm -hmm. are, you are setting up on your defense. But he could let's see. Like, if I was him, I'd probably I know I take a lot of damage. Um, the hog will separate. Probably put the baby dragon on, on these two, put the skeletons on top of the hog, and then just all in you on the side and spray mm -hmm. hard to, to like stop. Overall, really good defense. You want to just zap those pups. Okay. Uh, just because of the bomb, you know, you know the 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 loon bomb. The skeletons mm -hmm. didn't really do anything. So this like you have you have such a lead here in this position. The thing about this lava hound deck is it gives up all of its defense to get pumps mm -hmm. up to get ahead and then the three crown you. Mm -hmm. Um, he hasn't pumped up a single time. You're like sitting here waiting for him to pump. And you punish him as soon as he does it, or you punish him as soon as he plays Lava Hound. If, to mm -hmm. do that, like I'll, I'll tell you the place where you start up your push. You play your knight in the middle, toward the tower okay. that you want to attack. Or toward the tower that they um, are not going to, like, they have a less chance of defending. So, mm -hmm. like, you wouldn't, obviously, you wouldn't go to the side, because the side, this tower is already dead. You would play knight right here. So mm -hmm. it walks into this lane, and it threatens him, so that he can't just pump up for free. Okay. See what that does? Like yeah, if, yeah. If you were playing from his, his position, and you see a knight in the middle. Because, mm -hmm. like, the thing about the knight is, you could just, you could just drop Musketeer, Hog Rider, and just go kill him. Mm -hmm. So he has to, like, respect that. So this works fine, too. That's exactly the same thing. Now he has to respect it. Here is what kind of kills you. Mm. Um, if anything, you let this knight walk up, and then you can play a musky on top of this. You put the musky here. She locks onto the uh, mega minion first, and then she locks onto the mm -hmm. lava hound. And you could de defend from there. So now you're basically pushing into a lava hound lane. You're pushing into the lava hound lane. Like, if anything, you want to be avoiding pushing into tank lanes. Mm. So tank lanes are 
everything like giant golem lava hound all that stuff you don't mm. want to be pushing into okay and uh again we just come back to this fireball but this 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 mega minion basically did the same thing after being fireballed or not being fireballed mm -hmm. right still getting its value if anything getting more so because she was fireballed So you really want to be focusing on uh, the f not making sure that this gets another hit. If you zap it, like right now, it doesn't mm -hmm. get a second hit. You maintain your tower advantage. But he zaps you, and you don't respect it. So he takes your tower. Mm -hmm. And now you're, you're, you get a second chance at life again. You see how the cycle works out? Mm -hmm. You have Knight, you have Hog Rider. He has Fireball, Skeleton, Mega Minion, uh, Pump. There's no reason that you shouldn't take this tower right here. So what happens is in a minute, you take this tower, he builds up his push, takes your tower, you take his, and then you go. Th you you have the momentum to go on to 3 crown him. Okay. Although your advantage should have been way bigger because this tower should still be up. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is really weird. So he yeah. pumps. If anything, like I know for a fact that you could pick push past this. You could just fireball this as well. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for you to not have just fireball this. You didn't need fireball. And like the kind of perfect storm of Oh, oh shit just happens where, you yeah. know, where you're just kind of throwing stuff into him now that was a great fireball though Okay. So I think that we're going to try this matchup. Uh, I'm going to play this Lava Hound deck. Okay. And uh, let's see. This Lava Hound. Do you have a BB Dragon, right? Yeah. So the thing about Lava Hound, like what I try to tell people about Lava Hound is uh, Lava Hound is one of these decks where you, it's not, you're not really beating the player, you're beating the deck. Once you mm -hmm. hit a point, um, you play, yeah, I, I, I'm like saying this again, but you're, you're playing against the deck and not really the person. I think mm -hmm. this is a good one to learn, which is why like I can play it against you. Uh, my hand... I'll, probably, I'll definitely play like better than the other guy, but you'll still learn how to abuse what I do mm -hmm. when you play Hog Rider. So take, taking all this stuff into account, uh, try to do your best to seem threatening to me. Mm -hmm. right? We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. It always helps to talk through your mm. uh, hand as well be trying to explain why you're doing what you're doing yeah so i have um hog in hand i also have skelly so i'm gonna split skellies at the back mm -hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and cycle my cards as well to look for my pump uh... nice that's a good hog rider You don't want to be taking free damage from a baby dragon. You, I know you could use your, <clears throat> what is it, cards like, uh, 
cards like your Ice Spirit, your Skeletons, to buy time. Mm. So when people play Lava Hound, they should always be pushing towers. Pushing on towers that are uh, lower. Good zap. Tornado everything back. There is a way to do this where you see how that lava, uh, the the loon just like walks around the yeah. lava hound. You can tornado to the king tower there. Oh, the the balloon to the, the king tower. Yeah, you can. You can do that to the king tower. Just like make sure to have a unit kind of uh -huh. killing it so that you don't get through caught by the balloon. This will be tough here, I'm low. At this point again, I, I would say like you would have to give up this tower. Just from where you are in Elixir. There's uh -huh. something that you can and cannot defend. So you, I would say like you would give give this one up. Yeah. And try to just not get through crown while t trying to take these two towers. I mean from here it's kind of really, really difficult, but mm -hmm. it's always good to know what your options are. That was a bad night. Twenty of this back. Like, oh, you can fireball it now. Hey. <laughs> it was so close. I had both towers low. Yeah. Just couldn't get a tower. Let's see, we're gonna go into it really fast. Uh, okay. If you're doing this well against me, who you know, because I'm not putting like pumps over here and shit, giving you free power, <laughs> you, you should yeah. you should do better against like uh -huh. other other people who are playing this. Um, so against like lava hounds, again, they don't have very strong ground defense. You want to be abusing mm -hmm. that. You want to be. There's two times where you abuse them: either when they put the lava hound down or when they pump up. Okay. Kind of leaked here. Yeah, a little, a little bit. You want to be using your musketeer. You want to be abusing your musketeer here. I might you actually have it in your hand. If you put her, you you know how to use her range. Yeah, because yeah. you can place it in the middle tile and it'll kill the mega minion and then it'll lock onto the baby dragon. Exactly. Should have done that. Yeah, uh, and you want to be putting her in closer to the like. So you know, imagine like the middle line here. Yep. Right, you want to be putting her on the side, so yeah, that she so kills this, kills this, tower. walks on, and then goes on to do yeah. the attack. But then you put a knight and you ignore the baby dragon, <laughs> kind of like completely. <laughs> yeah, I definitely should have played musky there. Could have been very clean. Could yeah, very clean, sir. Musketeer could have gotten so much value. Yeah, like so. Like the thing about these cycle decks that you want to learn is that the the amount of decision making that you do is like a lot. It's 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 like way more than like what I'm doing here. Yeah. Like my decisions, I'm making less, but they mean more. But yours, mm -hmm. you're making more, but add up. Yeah. But they add up, right? If you if you make all of the right consecutive decisions, and you get ahead. Mm. Uh. And there's not much that I can do about it. But if you make small, the wrong small, the wrong decisions, even however small they are, they mm. that adds up, adds up as well. So should I have played Musketeer, like, further up to lock onto the balloon? Mm, it's very risky. Yeah. It's actually okay where you put it here or over here. Mm -hmm. But just a small thing. If you ever do play other Tornado decks, see how uh -huh. this Lava Loon, this uh, Loon right here, it's going to 
before connecting to the tower, move away from the uh, lava hound uh -huh. toward the king tower, like that. Yeah. If you start the tornado and you put the tornado tile like here, it'll activate oh. king tower. And if you have something to kill the loon, like if you, I think you could have been really patient here and just wait for the uh, lava hound. Play me. Uh, I play balloon. Mm -hmm. Then you could buy time with skeletons, knight, whatever. Tornado to the king tower. Drop your uh, musky. Kill off the balloon. Kill off the lava hound. You have the activated king tower. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's like. Uh, it's it's really finessey, you know. It's like yeah. <laughs> I, I obviously I I'm not gonna sit here and expect for you to do that. Right. It's just like I've seen very good players do it, and uh, it, it's helped me out a lot of times as well. I would say overall your decision making was pretty good though. This game, mm -hmm. um, fireballing your pumps. Using your muskies, using your tornado, uh, pushing at the right time when I drop my lava hound or I drop pump, zapping. So overall, just keep this up and you'll do much better. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I guess sort of recap. Your you, I. I know you've watched those videos again. But mm. try and go over them one more time and like watch how they use their cycle cards. Things like okay. Skeleton, Ice Spirit, Zap, NATO, whatever. Uh, and watch how few times they use their Fireball. Like they'll use their Fireball on either really important pushes, last mm -hmm. ditch defenses, or to punish people's misplaced cards. Okay. But they don't use it on like defense when they don't need to. Almost ever. Uh, here, learn when you can play your hog rider. Uh, if they ever misplace their buildings, mm. um, again with your cycle cards and your defenses as well. Uh, musky timing is pretty important. If they put their if they put their push like if they start to push really early, then you want to be matching that with the musky. If they start to push at the back, then match it with your musky. Okay. Uh, you're doing your ice spear trick right. It's fine against lava loon. It's all it's all about pressure and hitting them when they're weakest. Like okay. I said before, lava loon is weak on uh, ground defense. Mm. You want to be abusing that. You want to be using your knight, your hog rider, your sap. Punish them. Use your musky and your tornado for defense. Um, know when to give up a tower if you know if you feel like you just can't defend it. Just mm -hmm. try to not get three crowned. Okay. Yeah. There is no reason why I think that you shouldn't win this game here. Mm hmm All right. Any uh, last questions? Nah, dude. That was super helpful. I really appreciate it. All right. If you have any questions, uh, you can just message me through my Gmail, and I'll uh, you know, get back to you. Skype okay, as cool. well. Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks, See man. See you later, man. Yeah.